what's up? So I want to go over the basics of apply metric today. So um, I always kind of get these questions of why do we do all these different kind of plyometric drills as sprinters and jumpers and hurdlers in my training program. So I'm sure you guys have a few questions as well. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Fallon Headings. I'm a physical therapist and a track and field performance coach. So let's go over just the basics of a plyometric. There are three phases to the basics of a plyometric. There, so the first phase is your eccentric phase. This is your slowly lowering down. Then there's a little bit, and this is the quickest phase, is your isometric phase. That's your holding phase. And then you power up, which is your concentric phase, and that's the third phase. So this is kind of how a plyometric goes. You essentially, you essentially, you slowly control the motion down, then you hold it for a second, then you power back up. And when I say holding for a second, you really don't hold for a second. It's like literally like a, just an instant, and then you pop back up. But there's different ways that you can train each phase of a plyometric. So when you're doing plyometrics, you don't have to constantly put all three of these phases together. Now, would that be the most specific for your event? Yeah, probably, because no time are we starting from a standstill to jump over the hurdle in a race. No time are we starting from a standing still and not getting a running start for our um, long jump, triple jump, high jump. No time in sprinting are we asking the body to, except for the start, are we asking them to start from an isometric phase, okay? So a lot of times we have to train all three of these phases, but if you see an athlete or you know yourself, you're struggling in one of these three phases, you can practice that phase more. So an example of just practicing an eccentric phase, which I think a lot of times is number one, the most commonly area that athletes need to train more in is because they just can't absorb the forces or they're not ready to absorb the forces as well as they should be. And that's where a lot of the energy is lost. So an example of an eccentric exercise would just be a box drop. So you're on top of this box, you're dropping off of it, and you're trying to not let your hips drop so much. You're kind of landing and you're hoping that you stay still once you land. So that would be absorbing the forces as quick as possible. So you're slowing your body down as quick as possible once you hit the ground. Then if you want to practice an isometric of where you're starting from a standstill and you're being powerful from that position, this would be really good for somebody who is slow coming out of the blocks. And this can also be used as a reaction drill because if somebody's slow coming out of the blocks, if you say, go, jump, they have to power their muscles or get their, pa get their power as quick as possible from just that auditory um, cue. So when we say, go, jump, or jump, this person has to jump off the seated box as quick as possible. So that, this is a really good drill that I use for sprinters a lot of the time. So an example would be the seated box jump. So you start seated in a seated position. So you're already kind of in that isometric hold and then you're going from there, okay? So you have no time or range of motion to lower down anymore because the box is in your way. So that's where you start with an isometric and then you're powering up. Then the last one is a concentric box jump. So essentially this is a box jump is going to get all three phases in because you are slowly lowering a little bit. You're getting that little bit of a dip and then you're powering up to land on the box. But the concentric phase is where you get that triple extension, where you extend really nice and tall to get on to the box. Okay. So these are just the basics of a plyometric and how you can split it up to just work on the eccentric phase with a box drop, um, isometric phase, concentric. The other thing to think about as a track runner, 90% of the time, we're not on two feet. So doing these things single leg is a huge, more specific plyometric for our sport. 
okay? So give those a try. If you guys have any questions, put it in the comment section, send me a message. Um, thanks for watching this video. If you learned something, share it, like it, um, subscribe to my page. And as always, happy training.